Every now and then, I'll watch a really good sci-fi that'll twist what it means to be human and depict an eerie robot that seems almost alive. But that's just in the movies. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the talking sentient sandwich, and I am sometimes afraid of AI and what it could develop into in the future. Sometimes. Because in real life, AI is much more innocuous. The term artificial intelligence has a very negative connotation to it, simply because humans tend to be afraid of what we don't understand. And attempting to understand how a synthetic brain can function separately from our evolved monkey brains is like trying to build it in the first place. It can be done, but I sure don't know how. But that's not necessarily what our AI even is. They might look independent at times, but the software that makes those programs is anything but. By definition, the AI we've developed can be seen as an independent intelligence, but without our input, there's not much for those machines to do. So when you're watching the next Tom Cruise flick, where he's being chased down by some rogue AI that's afraid of being turned off, just remember how different movie AI is to what we actually have. The closest we've gotten in real life is chatbots and animatronics programmed to seem real. Yet all of their actions are just that programming. Because when it comes down to it, AI is really dumb. It'll only get better with time, but I guarantee you, no matter how far it's been iterated, it won't ever be able to create something new. For the foreseeable future, AI will only be capable of doing what humans ask it to. And even then, that request has to be incredibly specific and straightforward, or else the program will just crash on you. I've seen someone claim to have their mind blown because they input the command Minecraft into an AI and he was able to perfectly key up what looked to be the game Minecraft. That might be impressive if there weren't hundreds of thousands of videos that the AI was able to steal from. There is nothing creative or spontaneous about anything made with an AI machine anywhere. And I'm more than comfortable making that blanket statement for each and every new program being made every day for at least the next decade or so. In fact, I'm more than comfortable talking all this smack on AI because there's only one way for it to actually catch up to natural intelligence, and that's through rote learning. But even then, it can't really catch up to us. If you're not familiar with the phrase, just think of it as trial and error. Attempting every possible way that it can take to get to an outcome, an AI can easily memorize what process works and what doesn't, and further than that, it can identify the quickest and most efficient method out of the bunch. Learning more every time the AI acts, that process teaches it quite a lot, but that doesn't solve the issue that AI can't create. AI physically cannot make something new and original, and no matter how advanced it gets, it won't surpass that wall. It takes something known and regurgitates it back to you. I do believe down the line we are all going to have to worry about a machine taking our jobs, especially if that job is physical and repetitive, but machines will never make movies or anything in the entertainment industry. Films like The Spider-Verse and Klaus were beautifully animated with hours, sometimes even days of work dedicated to a single detail in one frame. But work like that can sometimes get tedious and altogether too time-consuming. So AI was used to fill the gaps of simple, mindless work that would otherwise just be a time sink. That way, the filmmakers can spend that time furthering other elements of the film. Like any other tool, it can and should be used, but it needs to be used right. Using it to fully complete a script will only end up in a terrible product, but using it to help cut an object out in Photoshop is perfectly fine. While I have no fear of it taking my job today, 20 years down the line after an AI has rote learned billions of things daily, then I might start sweating. So let's worry about that now rather than letting the problem creep up on us. Because I've already seen countless examples of companies and even filmmakers overusing AI in ways that only end up taking real life jobs away from the movie that would otherwise inject it with necessary creativity. It's a very gray line with some people wrongly viewing AI as the ultimate evil that should never be used, and others wrongly viewing it as something that can complete every step in the filmmaking process. But it's an incredibly useful tool as long as we can find a healthy balance of using it and not overstepping on actual creative elements. 
but I could talk about AI and how it should and shouldn't be used in filmmaking for hours, but instead, I'll leave you with one last thought. Because AI should be used to help creative people do tedious stuff, not help tedious people do creative stuff. But what are your thoughts on AI? Hate it? Love it? Think it's gonna be the death of us? Leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly videos and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.